I'm excited about this next session. When I was, again, if you, hopefully you all really enjoying this conference. I was the one that came up with like what all we should have for the talks. And um, I had a lot of ideas. We had a lot of ideas and we were trying to figure out like, are these kids gonna hang with us all this time? Are they gonna get tired? Um, do they only wanna know like, how do we smash the stack and all that sort of cool stuff? But it's, we're here about the whole person, polishing the whole person. We wanna see you, you know, successful professionals in the coming years. And so part of that is your brand. And who better, like when I was thinking about this, like I know, I know the one dude who can totally do this because he's known as the bow tie guy. He used to work at Cisco, infectious smile. And he is like, if you, like if you ever thought about like a radical fan of something, Justin is like the most radical Warriors fan that you could have. He's recently married. He's highly energetic. And I'm excited to have this talk. Justin, I'm going to pass it over to you. Man, Michelle, that's, that uh, was an amazing intro. So hopefully I can live up to it. Um, and following Joanna and Ron, not nervous at all. That, that's, that's, a, that's a lot to follow you guys. Uh, great job, Joanna and Ron. I uh, loved your guys' insights. I saw a few people in the chat say that today was the best day ever so far. So uh, hopefully we can keep that going here. Um, let me share my screen just so we can talk through this. But uh, nice to meet all of you, you uh, future CIOs, CISOs, CXOs. Um, I get to talk to you today about what Michelle has mentioned, branding yourself. So uh, if you have any questions, I'd love to take questions if we have time at the end. I will be asking you guys for some of your insight uh, through the chat panel, and I will be reading the chat panel uh, as we go through this as best as I can. So uh, first off, I'm sure you've heard of a ton of smart people. You've heard from a ton of smart people this week. Um, and I want you to close your eyes for like five, 10 seconds here. I'll keep mine open because I have to look at this. But think of one presenter that you've heard from, not Ron and Joanna because they just they just went, but Think of someone that you heard from this week that you, you remember, type their name and what you learned from them in chat. I just want to see what people have been able to brand themselves in just a short half an hour time span or, you know, hour long. Everyone. <laughs> well done, James, James, coolest guy, Alan. So, all right. I need to meet this James person. Apparently he's amazing. Okay, of course, Alan's amazing. Lynn. All right, Michelle, looks like uh, James is, is, uh, is my competition here. So. I'll get to meet him one day. We'll see. <laughs> so what I want to show you guys is that, look, whether or not they meant to do this, but James, Lynn, Alan, Ed, they've all branded themselves. And you guys have all remembered their brands and certain things about them. Hopefully all good things, positive things. So my next question, which you don't really have to answer, do you still have parent-teacher conferences? Uh, I, I think most of you do, or at least have had them in the past. No, no, no. <laughs> you guys are probably all good students. That's why I had a ton of parent teacher conferences when I was a kid. Uh, and so what I wanted to say is that these types of meetings or conversations where two very important people or more than two people have a conversation about who you are without you there. This does not stop after school. This continues to go on. People talk about me all the time um, in the workplace. Uh, people will talk about you, your parents, your friends. And so what I want to talk to you about today is how to build your own personal brand so that your families, strangers, managers, coworkers, potential employers can all talk about you in a way that you would want them to talk about you. <laughs> so I'm reading you guys' chats. So they're, they're pretty funny. So today I'll be talking to you about Ben. But just real quickly, a little bit about me. Um, I don't sell products. I work for sales engineers and salespeople to help understand the customers. You can call me the Cupid of the tech industry. Uh, I connect different executives from my company to our customer companies, to our prospect companies. And pretty much uh, they, help, they help us sell our products because of, of their relationships that they've built over time. <laughs> my, my bow tie is here, so we're good to go. Uh, and as Michelle mentioned, I recently got married about three weeks ago, so that's exciting. Um, we're doing fun facts. So fun fact is that my wife and I actually got married in secret um, about two years ago, COVID. Uh, and uh, we also got married again a few weeks ago. And our biggest, our big wedding that we've been planning that we've had to put off for two years now. Thank you, guys. Uh, our third wedding is going to be next May. So we're going to get married three times. So if we want to talk security, that's, that's, that's marriage security as much as you can get, right? <laughs> 
Um, so moving into Ben. Now, me being completely non-technical, okay? I know all you guys are super smart. You're starting cybersecurity at a really young age, so you're way ahead of me. I'm the opposite of an engineer. Uh, I work at a top network management and security startup. I worked at Cisco before this. I'd like to think I'm doing well. Um, but Ben is the reason why I've been able to overcome my lack of traditional and technical skills. Now, Ben is a personal guide on how to increase your job opportunities early on in your career. And what it stands for is branding yourself, evolving and networking. So I don't know if you guys are taking notes, but that's an easy thing to write down. It's also easy to remember, you don't have to write it down. But for instance, branding yourself is know that everyone is always watching and assessing your character and your value. So whether or not you think someone's watching you or you're on stage or you're at work, people are always gonna be making assumptions about you based off of what they can see. So I'll go more into that later. The E stands for evolve. And that means to embrace your strengths, but also outlearn others to outperform them. So it's important that you know your strengths, you know your weaknesses, decide which weaknesses are worth working on based off of what, where you wanna be in your, in your life. If you wanna be a CISO, obviously you need to study cybersecurity. If you wanna be you know, a chief product marketing officer, you have to study product. So it's about evolving, not just branding yourself and staying there, but to continue to get better and to add things to your arsenal. Uh, the last piece, networking is to me the most important because if you brand yourself well, step one, you evolve well, step two, but nobody knows you exist or nobody knows about what you can do, then these first two things didn't matter in the first place. So make sure that you hit all three of these and I'll tell you how you could do that in a little bit. Now I'll have some interactive sessions here. I, I wish we were all in real life so I could just ask you guys on stage here, but um, let's just talk through the chat panel. So can you guys type to me, uh, what companies do you think have a strong brand? <laughs> I might have to start calling it Benjamin from now on. Cisco, Disney, Apple, Nike, Apple, 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 Nike, Google. These are all great brands. I agree with you guys. <laughs> Potato chips, Starbucks for sure. Once you guys become CEOs, CIOs, and CISOs, you will need some Starbucks and maybe some Nikes to run back and forth. Um, can you name me some companies that have a, a bad brand? And, you know, we're, we're not being mean here, but just, you know, type to me what you think has <laughs> solar winds. There we go, Michelle. Um, Hyundai, exactly. D yep, Disney. Okay, now this is fun. Can you type to me some some people that you think have good brands? So who are some people that have good brands? <laughs> yep, Jan, Bill Gates, James, Chuck. <laughs> James has a really good brand. <laughs> Obviously me, well done. Elon, great. Uh, and lastly for this, can you type to me people that have bad brands? McAfee, Tim Cook, Joe. So this is great. What you can see is that some of the companies that you mentioned came up in the good brands and the bad brands. Some of the people that you mentioned came up in the good people brands and the bad people brands. So what we're seeing is that people can have different perspectives of who people are. So people will have different perspectives of who you are. Now, thank you for your uh, for all the chat. I appreciate you guys. Uh, when you are in the workplace or even when you're coming out of school, guess what? Do you think that you earn jobs and promotions because of who you are? That's actually wrong because you do not earn jobs and promotions based off of who you are. Opportunities are actually given to you based on who people think you are. So there's always a, a small difference, sometimes a big difference between who you are and who people think you are. So be mindful of who you are and how you show up because that's where you get your opportunities from. It's not always who you are. It's who people think you are. So one thing you can do is introduce yourself in a more fun and memorable way. That's easy to say, but let me give you some examples. So if I'm going to introduce myself and I just say, hey, everybody, I'm Justin Riray, and I'm a sales program manager at Tanium. How many people are going to remember that? Zero. I won't even remember that. But what if I say something like, hey, guys, nice to meet you. I'm Justin Riray. Uh, I work at Tanium. It's a company that helps other companies see and keep track of all of their connected assets and devices. It's amazing. I get to hire retired CEOs. I get to hire retired CIOs and CISOs to sell our software to their friends that are CEOs and CIOs of companies we want to sell to. It's such a cool job. I pretty much get to be the Cupid 
of our company. And I get to make connections that already exist to help us sell and to help us get our brand and our product out there. So that first example where, hey, I'm Justin and I'm, I work at Tanium, I'm a sales manager. Boring. So give, give 20 to 30 seconds of what you do, whether that's a story, an anecdote, um, or even just about what, what it is you're doing. So for example, if I'm a student, if, if I'm one of you guys or, or, or you girls, like, hi, I'm Caitlin. I'm a computer science major at New York University. That's a pretty weak introduction. But if I say, hey guys, I'm Caitlin. I study cybersecurity. I led my team to winning a capture the flag event based on an idea that I learned from watching my favorite show, Mr. Robot. So now my team and I are about to go to Disney World next month. Even if that's kind of, you might think it's irrelevant, people are gonna wanna catch up with you. Like, hey, Hope, who's that Caitlin person that, that won a capture the flag? They're gonna to wanna to check in with you next month and see, hey, how is that trip to Disney World? So what you're doing is you're giving things people to remember about you instead of just reading off your headline of what your LinkedIn would say. So what I'm gonna do is go into a quick thing about Steph Curry. Yes, as Michelle mentioned, I'm a huge Warrior fan. That's not why I'm using Steph Curry. But um, not only does he have his own brand of how he just like destroys his opponents on the court, but he's humble about it most of the time. But the reason I'm bringing him up is because be like Steph Curry, where you let your work speak for yourself, but you also are mindful about what brand you carry and, and how you carry yourself. He's so good at branding that his entire family has a brand. And I guarantee you there's like a PR person behind him and his family. But for the most part, just think of kind of being the best version of yourself at all times, not just when you're doing your job. <laughs> so real quick story, let me just time check. We're good. Quick story of um, how I branded myself as a bow tie guy. Going into Cisco, I knew that there was gonna be hundreds of, of young people that were smarter than me, that were better than me, that did different things, that had better backgrounds. So I, I really thought, how can I you know, stand, stand out uh, from all these people? Uh, I had a cheap way to do it. I had one bow tie that I bought for, for a wedding a couple months before, and I just I put that bow tie on on my first day. Uh, first day went really well. I got at least a dozen compliments on the bow tie. So I thought, all right, well, what if I just wear the bow tie the next day? <laughs> so I changed my whole outfit. <laughs> I, taught, I see someone wearing a top hat. Uh, I wore the same bow tie, and it just happened to be the big company meeting that only happens every six months at Cisco. So somehow my teammate got me a front row, third row seat right in the middle. And about two minutes before the big company meeting started, the CEO at the time, John Chambers, he walks right up to me and says, hey, young man, I love the bow tie. And so I joked, I'm like, John, I stayed up all night trying to tie this for you. I was on YouTube, I was sweating, my arms were cramping. So we ended up actually talking for a couple of minutes before the show started or before the, the meeting started. But what that showed me is, man, you know, like 100,000 people at Cisco, this guy has no idea who I am. I just started at this company, but he spoke to me out of everybody in the room because I had something that was different that he could see. So even though I'm going to talk to you mostly about branding yourself, you know, mentally, emotionally, and, and how you interact with people, you should show up in a way that you want to be remembered at work. So dress well, do your hair a certain way. I don't know, wear Warriors jerseys every day, but be memorable and, and, and be who you are, be genuine, because people will remember you for that. So the reason I'm showing this screen is because a big part of brand yourself these days, especially because of COVID, especially because of social media, is your Google page. So guess what? You don't control your Google page, really, but you do control your social media and you control what you post and you kind of have a say in what people post about you. So what I'm showing you is um, on the left side, I guess type in like Google or type, type in your name, whatever you want to type in if you have ever Googled yourself. Just say yes. <laughs> And so, no, yeah, okay, so I'm seeing a lot of yeses. Now, have you ever Google yourself on incognito or private browser? So that's important is that obviously you guys know this better than I do, but the algorithm of everything you've looked up and you've been doing on, on your computers, your devices are gonna carry things with them. So make sure that you search yourself on incognito or private browser and look at the first three to four pages. Cause I'm telling you this, if you apply to Tanium for a job on, on, on my team, yeah, I'll look at your resume for like 30 seconds, but more importantly, I'm going to Google you and I'm going to look at the first two or three pages. So whatever I find is what I'm going to judge you on. So do you have, you know, a portfolio of what you've been doing for cyber? Do you have some articles up online? Do you at least have social media where you're talking about the projects you're doing at school? 
or is it just social media where like you're drinking or you're partying? I'm not saying that stuff is wrong, but what I had to do is look, I grew up being a really like a, a huge sports fan uh, and a class clown more importantly. So you can guess that on my social media, I had some offensive jokes. I had some questionable posts and comments. I finally made a decision when people started following me from, from Cisco and from other companies, I had to merge my social media. So that means that my professional self was no longer different than my personal self. I put them together. And that's actually helped me because now I get, you know, reach outs from companies fairly often that want to hire me. And it's because I'm showing that I'm a good brand ambassador to the company that I work for. And that's what companies are looking for. So be mindful of what you post online because the internet lasts forever, as you know this. So your personal brand and the decisions you make today can really impact the things that you want to do in the future. It happens all the time to celebrities and athletes being canceled for something that they did, you know, 10 years ago. So don't post anything that your 30 year old self would regret is what I'm saying. Um, now, social media is fun and it's a way to express ourselves, but realize that you're writing your own history book, which is, I think, what, what Michelle said, um, and that future employers can see anything you've ever posted. So make sure that you keep that in check and uh, make sure that your social media, the first two, three pages of Google is as good as your resume should be. So now real quick, virtual chat here. Um, knowing all this, how do you plan on branding yourself in the next one to two years? You could just type it into chat. Are you going to, you know, like show your hobbies online? Are you going to take classes? Are you going to meet people? Um, how would you brand yourself or what do you want your brand to be? Do you want to be known as like the smarty? Do you want to be known as the passionate engineer? Would it make good first impressions? Soapbox. Make a LinkedIn. That's, that's huge. If, if you are already on your way to college or about to graduate and, and you don't have a LinkedIn, you, you need to have a LinkedIn. <laughs> Sunglasses in the corner could be the smartest uh, hacker in the room there. Roblox, Billy, yeah, exactly. Roblox is good these days. <laughs> chocolate taste tester. I think we, we should all be chocolate taste testers. So I just want you guys to, to think about this um, after today, if you guys have time. How do you plan on branding yourself in the next couple of years? And how will you do that? What do you want people to say about you? So the next session is going to be about evolving. This is easy. Don't ever be complacent. That's how people fail. That's how companies fail. Not everyone's going to be lucky like Ron and be on the verge of termination and get a promotion. So wherever your successes are, those are not going to be enough tomorrow, right? Your successes, enjoy those today, do better tomorrow. And somebody mentioned Elon Musk, a few of you guys did, but he's an engineer, an inventor, investor, CEO. He founded Zip2 when he was, I think, like 20-something, sold it for over $300 million. I would have quit my job at that point and, you know, bought myself a boat and just went sailing for the rest of my life. But uh, he started PayPal, sold it to eBay for $1.5 billion. Now he leads SpaceX, Tesla, Hyperloop, um, you know, the boring company. He's, he, this guy is the, the epitome of human evolution. So... I'm not saying you should be Elon Musk. That's, that's a hard person to be. But learn things before you're forced to learn them. Learn early. The reason I say that is because these days, competition between your peers is so tough that unless you can already do the job that you're going to go into, it's hard to get hired. I'm not saying you have to be able to do a job perfectly before you get there. Obviously, we have to learn. But there are easy things you can do, like use YouTube videos. There are certifications you can get now. Um, there are groups or personal coaching there. Are, you can read books. You can read, you know, you can take community college classes. You can even just have conversations with friends or mentors or your, your parents' friends. All of these can help you evolve and choose the best methods that you can, you know, understand information and, and you can become a better version of yourself. And one day you will turn into Elon Musk. I'm just kidding, but never be satisfied with what you know. Always evolve and improve your personal brand. So the last piece is the most important part to me. Uh, this is networking. And this is important, again, because if you brand yourself well and you evolve, you just keep getting better. You keep learning new things. You outlearn your peers. But you don't talk to anyone about what you do. You don't post online what you do. Then how will people know that you exist, right? The value that you have and that you've grown doesn't matter until other people know about it. So if you share your passion, like I talk about basketball all the time, um, or if you make an impact in your community, if you do volunteer work, if, if you lead nonprofit groups, 
this is an easy way for people to remember you, right? You're not just a program manager. You're not just a software engineer, but you also lead a community group. You, you lead a volunteer group or you, you, you knit a lot and you give the things you knit to your friends and family. So now people have a multifaceted way to remember you. Now, real quick, let's talk about Lady Gaga. She's multi-platinum musician. She's an actress now, and she's also a well-known philanthropist and activist. So yes, she's super, super, you know, amazing as a celebrity. She has a great voice, great musician, but she also started the Born This Way Foundation back in 2012. And so the mission is to, to stop bullying whoever you are, wherever you are. Um, even when COVID started, she put together a, a Together at Home concert. She made, a, you know, over, a, I think, $120 million to fight the coronavirus pandemic. So you don't need to be a celebrity to make a difference, but be memorable through your actions, not just at work, but what you do outside of work. Because if you help others, people will spread the word about the good things you've done and your character will just be a positive force um, for, you know, for, for your career. And so that's what you're trying to do is don't do it because you're trying to get a better job, but just be who you are. If you're trying to help the, com the communities out, people will find out about it and that will be a part of your brand. Now, what's important here is that you've heard the phrase, it's not what you know, it's who you know, right? So what that means is it doesn't matter if you're smart, doesn't matter if you're talented, you know, nepotism, you have to have a friend at the company or like your parents have to work at a company and that's how you get the job. That's kind of true, but this is more important. You should write this down. It's not just what you know. It's not just who you know. It's who knows what you know. So who knows what you know? That's important because if I know you, I've been on a call with you, I've been in a meeting with you, I've, I've hung out with you, but I don't know the type of value you could bring to my company, then I will not think about you when a job comes up. But, you know, if Caitlin from before tells me that she want to capture the flag, um, you know, event, then next time I have an opening on my team for, a, you know, like a, a white hat hacker or something, I'm going to immediately think of her like, hey, we have an internship. I'm going to reach out to Caitlin because I remember her being valuable for this reason. So whenever you talk to people, don't just meet them. Make sure that they know what you do and they know what you know. There are three types of power in the world, and that's administrative power, financial power, and social power. Guess what? As a young kid, you probably don't have administrative power, which is what you get for being voted into office or being a manager because you're just starting out. You may not have financial power because you haven't made enough money yet to, to influence you know, the world or to influence communities. But what all of you could have is social power. And you get social power by you know, being a social media influencer. Michelle does a lot of stuff on social media. So people know her to be a force in the cybersecurity industry. Um, and if you have social power, share your passion, share what you do, people will sincerely remember you and appreciate you. And you're going to end up on their lists, their short list of jobs and applicants when um, it you know, comes time to hire someone. So I'm going to skip through this chat because I think we have about three minutes left. But what I wanted to say uh, to close out is that from the three things you've learned today, just remember that you are in the business of improving the lives of others. So you know that all businesses that exist today, for whether they're products or services, the reason that they exist in the world is because they bring value, they benefit others. People are no different. Just like I had you name you know, good brands and bad brands of companies earlier, and then immediately after I had you name good and bad brands of people. You guys are all in the business of making your family members' lives better, making your friends' lives better, your classmates, your future coworkers, um, your managers, your customers. So if that's how businesses work, then always be providing value and, and, um, and benefits to the people around you. And you, you know, the demand for you will stay up. Just to go through Ben again, really quickly, brand yourself, who are you? But more importantly, who do people think you are? Because how people view you is gonna be the reason that you that you gain you know opportunities in the workplace again the e stands for evolve out learn your peers and learn things that they're not learning go deeper into subjects go you know broader into subjects but learn as much as you can before you get the job because when the interview happens and they find out that hey you can already do everything we don't have to teach you easy to hire you there you'll get hired you'll get the big bucks 
And then of course, the last thing that's most important is network. It's not what you know, it's not even just who you know, it's who knows what you know. So make sure that you get your name out there, whether it's in person or you're posting on, on social media, on LinkedIn, that's just as important as making sure your brand is set and you're evolving yourself every day. So because I like puns, benefit yourself to benefit others. And that's how to use the power of Ben. That was fast, you guys. I usually do this in an hour. So hopefully that sticks with you. I'm happy to answer any questions in like the one minute that we have left. <laughs> Hey, Justin, I hope you have a couple minutes because we have some questions in the Q&A section. Man, yeah. I learned something and I'm part of the Senior Citizens Denny Meal Club, uh, Justin. So I learned <laughs> I have a boring intro, but this is a great, <laughs> a great topic. You did an excellent job of delivering it. Uh, and I want to start with the last question that came up here is, do you have any tips for people who have social anxiety or introverts like me or mm -hmm. people who are just shy in general? Um, that would just rather just work than talk to people? I, I love this question. And I actually, I, I started answering this question before Q&A, but again, I usually have an hour, had half an hour today. And so what I'll tell you is that if you have social anxiety or if you're an introvert, guess what? I'm an introvert. Uh, the COVID was like the best thing that happened to me for my work. Uh, although I'm very social when I'm out, it actually takes a lot of energy for me to, to meet people. Um, and to kind of spend like a whole day or even just a whole hour networking in, in these like big functions. Uh, I prepare for a long time when, when I do any type of, uh, of public speaking. So what you can do is most importantly, know what you're going to talk about and know your job, understand your material. If, you're, if you are very comfortable with what you need to talk about or what you want to talk about, it's not going to be as nerve wracking because you're not trying to search in your brain like, oh, what do I need to talk about now or what comes next? How do I impress these people? Just talk about what you love. And that's why I talk about use your passion. Because if you talk about something you're passionate about, and hopefully that's something you're working on, that's so easy to talk about with anybody, right? That's how it is. If you're in a room with strangers or you're like on a bus, say like, I like, we'll say I like League of Legends. That's my, my favorite game. I'm going to kind of stay to myself. But if I hear someone talk about League of Legends, boom, I become an extrovert. So if you're in a room full of people that are, you know, doing cybersecurity or whatever you're working on, you already know that you share some, some type of commonality. Um, and so just talk to one person at a time. You don't have to get up. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to make a big scene. Meet one person, and that's good enough. So you're making one connection. You'll meet their friends later on. If they liked you and they thought you had a good brand, that's a strong connection for you. And one strong connection is better than 100 weak connections. Awesome advice, Justin. Hey, this is a great question. You talked about it's it's what people know about you. So what's the right balance between privacy and being known? That's a no, really good question. First off, it always depends. There's never an answer. Depending on where you work, what industry you're in, what culture you come from, there's a different balance of how you should act and what type of information you should share. You have to decide what you want to, to, to estimate, right? Because say you have one day or one week with all these people, if this was in person, or even if it's not in person, you have to decide what do I want to show about myself right off the bat? Because if you go, you know, I'll talk about Warriors games, I'll talk about video games I play. That's what they're going to remember about you in like the 30 seconds that they had. But if you stay more professional, and you just talk about what you do for work, that might not be as memorable because, you know, they don't gel with you as much. So you kind of have to make a call whenever you get a first impression chance. Every first impression is an interview for a job at some point. Even if you're talking to other college students or other high school students, those people could eventually give you jobs. When I went to school, I have now hired four of my friends to, to different companies because I knew them when I was in class with them. So your first impression is really up to you how you want to build it. Do you go personal? memorable or do you have such an exciting job that you can go with your job first it's up to you thank you uh justin awesome man i wish we just had a lot more time uh <laughs> but but we don't actually maybe one i don't know um it's, it's kind of a long one but can you speak to a little bit about how you create a good elevator pitch like the 20 second i think you did it yes. in your intro you you gave examples of that on how yes. to do it. so i think we, I think we covered that one. Just, just one quick tip is run it by your friends and family. That's all. Don't do it all in your head. Run it by other <laughs> people because they'll, they'll give you real feedback. And tell the first thing you want to say is, hey, you're not going to hurt my feelings. I want to be the best version of myself. 
is this good or do I need to change it? <laughs> yeah. So in, in terms of tweetable quotes, that was definitely the one that I would tweet about this conversation. Be the best version of yourself. Uh, and everything I've ever seen about Justin is rocks. I mean, from the infectious smile to the very creative bow tie. And hey, guys and gals on this call, he showed up to company meetings with those wild cloud suits, those flowers, <laughs> like the heart suits. Justin did it all because he could do it. And that was that was his brand. And I love the Cupid, uh, being the Cupid in terms of connecting all the companies. And you do that quite well, Justin. The stream, the chat stream has been wonderful. I mean, this talk really resonated with our audience. And I think it's important because they're, I mean, I know I made some like bad decisions in my younger years. And, and I <laughs> we see, all did. <laughs> yeah, I see stuff that my grandkids are posting. I'm like, uh, maybe that's, you know, if you're looking for a job, maybe not posting all those, you're at Disneyland <laughs> uh, pictures. And so great job, Justin. You actually got the designation of the goat. So that's thank you, Ramirez. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, thank you so much, Justin. It's been awesome. Thanks for coming by and encouraging the, the crowd. And I look forward to seeing you in the internet space. And I'm excited yes. for you and your marriage. I remember when you when you blogged about meeting her and when y'all yes. were gonna get married. Super exciting.